The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? When evil men come to destroy me, they will stumble and fall. For though a mighty army marches against me, my heart will know no fear. I am confident the Lord will save me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? When evil men come to destroy me, they will stumble and fall. For though a mighty army marches against me, my heart will know no fear. I am confident the Lord will hear me. Oh yes. We have confidence in the Lord. His eye is on us. If his eye is on the sparrow, how much more is it on his own children of his creation? Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to the reading of the Word of God on this June 23. June 23, we will be reading from 2 Kings and we are already in chapter 4, and we will pick up with verse 18. Second Kings chapter 4, picking up with verse 18. Beit Melechem, Second Kings, okay? And we're going to read about two incredible miracles that the prophet Elisha performs. And Melissa is here to put on the graphics. Kathy's your graphics are just awesome, covering everyone who's included in this chapter, depicting it for us so beautifully. And I welcome all of you to the reading of the word on June 23, 2 Kings 4, 18. And the child of the Shunammite woman grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father, to the reapers. And he said to his father, my head, my head. So he said to a servant, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. Died. And she went up and she laid him on the bed of the man of God shut the door upon him and went out. And then she called to her husband and she said, please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Shabbat. She didn't tell him. So he said, so she said, it, it is well. What faith already, it is well. And then she saddled a donkey and she said to her servant, drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. So she departed and she went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. And so it was when the man of God saw her afar off. He said to his servant Gehazi, Look, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it, is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. Now when she came to the man of God at the hill, 
she caught him by the feet. Bow down, caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. So she said, did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? And then he said to Gehazi, get yourself ready and take my staff in your hand and be on your way. And if you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if anyone greets you, do, do not answer him, but lay my staff on the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he arose and he followed her. Now Gehazi went on ahead of them and laid the staff on the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. And therefore he went back to meet him. And he told him, saying, The child has not awakened. And when Elisha came into the house, there was the child lying dead on his bed. He went in, therefore, shut the door behind the two of them, and he prayed to the Lord. Prayed. That was the answer for the prophet. It's our answer, too. And he went up, and he lay on the child and put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself out on the child, which he's, he's a man laying on a child, I would think. The child would not breathe, but feel lungs being squashed. But this is this is the miracle of the Lord. This is obedience. This is the prophet doing what he feels the Lord, the Holy Spirit is showing him to do. Very unusual. Go lay right on top of this child. Put your mouth on his, your hands on his. Wow. And the flesh of the child became warm. Warm. Not cold, dead anymore, warm. He returned and walked back and forth in the house. And again he went up and he stretched himself on, on him. Twice. Stretched himself. And then the child sneezed seven times. Oh, what a beautiful sound that was in Elijah's ears. Sneeze seven times. And the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and he said, Call the Shunammite woman. So he called her. And when she came in to him, he said, Pick up your son. So she went in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. And then she picked up her son and she went out. And Elisha returned to Gilgal, and there was a famine in the land. Now the sons of the prophets were sitting before him, and he said to his servant, Put on the large pot, and boil stew for the sons of the prophets. So one went out into the field to gather herbs, and found a wild vine and gathered from it a lapful of wild gourds, and came and sliced them into the pot of stew, though they did not know what they were. Not a good idea. And then they served it to the men to eat. Now it happened as they were eating the stew 
that they cried out and they said, man of God, there is death in the pot. And they could not eat it. So he said, then bring some flour. And he put it into the pot and said, serve it to the people that they may eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. And then a man came from Baal Shalasha and brought the man of God bread of the first fruits, 20 loaves of barley bread and newly ripened grain in his knapsack. And he said, give it to the people that they may eat. But his servant said, what? Shall I set this before 100 men? And he said again, Give it to the people that they may eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left over. Leftovers. So he set it before them, and they ate, and they had some left over, according to the word of the Lord. And we move right along to chapter 5. Chapter 5 of Beit Melechem, 2 Kings. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. Imagine this, a leper, and he's a mighty man of valor. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. And then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus and thus said the girl, who is from the land of Israel. And then the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed, and he took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold and ten changes of clothing. And then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, and this is what it said. Now be advised, when this letter comes to you, that I have sent Naaman, my servant, to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. And it happened, when the king of Israel read the letter, that he tore his clothes, and he said, Am I God to kill and make alive that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. And so it was when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes that he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Good question for today, isn't it? Is there a prophet in Israel? And then Naaman went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, and 
wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy are not the Abana and the Parfar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and he went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, wash and be clean. So that changed his mind. He went down and he dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his aides. And he came and he stood before him and he said, Indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now, therefore, please take a gift from your servant. But he said, as the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive nothing. And he urged him to take it, but Elijah refused. He refused. So Naaman said, well, then, if not, please let your servant be given to mule loads of earth, for your servant will no longer offer either burnt offering or sacrifices to other gods but to the Lord. Yet in this thing, may the Lord pardon your servant when my master goes into the temple of Rimmon to worship there and leans on my hand and I bow down in the temple of Rimmon. When I bow down in the temple of Rimmon, may the Lord please pardon your servant. In this thing. And then he said to him, <clears throat> Go in peace. So he departed from him a short distance. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Look, my master has spared Naaman the Syrian, while not receiving from his hands what he brought. But as the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. So Gehazi pursued Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, he got down from the chariot to meet him. And he said, it is all well? And he said, all is well. My master has sent me, saying, indeed, just now, Two young men of the sons of the prophets have come to me from the mountains of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two changes of garments. Bold-faced lie. So Naaman said, please take two talents. And he urged him and he bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments and handed them to his servants, to two of his servants. And they carried them on ahead of him. And when he came to the citadel, he took them from their hand and stored them away in the house. And then he let the men go and they departed. Now he went in and he stood before his master. Elisha said to him, where did you go, Gehazi? And he said, Your servant did not go anywhere. And then he said to him, Did not my heart go with you when the man 
turned back from his chariot to meet you. Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive groves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants? Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence leprous, as white as snow. Lying, you won't get away with lying. Read the last chapter of the whole Bible, Revelation 22, and see where lying is mentioned. Very serious. Don't lie. Don't exaggerate. Your mouth starts to do that, catch your mouth and go, <clears throat> swallow hard. And if you can't spit out truth, then just keep your mouth shut. We move right along to Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. And here it's mentioned about adding conditions, the Gentiles. And certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren. And this is what they said. Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, Moshe, you cannot be saved. And therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension, which must mean they had one heck of a row about this, and dispute with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. So, being sent on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, describing the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy to all the brethren. And when they had come to Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders. And they reported all things that God had done with them. But some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed rose up saying, It is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. And when there had been much dispute, oh, you get several Jewish people together, can they ever duke something out? Peter rose up and said to them, Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago God chose among us that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us, and made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. And then all the multitude kept silent and listened to Barnabas and Paul declaring how many miracles and wonders God had worked through them among the Gentiles. And after they had become silent, James answered, saying, 
Men and brethren, listen to me. Simon has declared how God at the first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And with this, the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written in the wonderful prophetic book of Amos. Amos, A-M-O-S, chapter 9, verses 11 and 12. Amos 9, 11 and 12. And here is the quote. After this, I will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins and I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord who does all these things. Oh, the prophet Amos way back gave a word about this very moment. Known to God from eternity are all his works, Therefore, I judge that we should not trouble those from among the Gentiles who are turning to God, but that we write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from blood. Don't eat the blood. For Moses has had throughout many generations those who preach him in every city, being read in the synagogues every Shabbat. And then it pleased the apostles and the elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, who was also named Barsabas, and Silas, leading men above among the brethren. And they wrote this letter by them. And here's the letter. The apostles, the elders, and the brethren, to the brethren who are of the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, greetings. Since we have heard that some who went out from us have troubled you with words, unsettling your souls, saying, you must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such command. It seemed good to us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. Men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who will also report the same things by word of mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit. Oh, see, they spent time with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit assured them that they were doing what was right. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you abstain from things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well. Farewell. Talk about words of encouragement. Awesome. And so then when they were sent off, they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the letter. And when they had read it, they rejoiced over its encouragement. Now Judas and Silas, themselves being prophets also, exhorted and strengthened the brethren with many words 
and after they had stayed there for a time, they were sent back with greetings from the brethren to the apostles. However, it seemed good to Silas to remain there. Paul and Barnabas also remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Isn't that just, isn't that glorious? Woo! That is absolutely glorious. Well, I even have some friends who are on a boat <laughs> who are listening to the Word of God today. Hallelujah. I hope you shout hallelujahs that bounce off the water. Welcome, Gordon. All right, we move right along to Psalm 141. Another Psalm of David, okay? Another song of David. And just let this Psalm... Um, just let it go into the depth of your soul, okay? These are good words for you. Psalm 141, another Psalm of David. Lord, I cry out to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayer be set before you as incense. The lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing, to practice wicked works with men who work iniquity. And do not let me eat of their delicacies. Let the righteous strike me. It shall be a kindness, and let him rebuke me. It shall be as excellent oil. Let not my head refuse it. Let my head not refuse it. Don't get into reasoning and reason away. Just receive it. For still my prayer is against the deeds of the wicked. Their judges are overthrown by the sides of the cliff, and they hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the mouth of the grave, as when one plows and breaks up the earth. But my eyes my eyes are upon you, O oh God, the Lord. In you I take refuge. Do not leave my soul destitute. Keep me from the snares they have laid for me and from the traps of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I escape safely. Very good words. And that's exactly what happened in David's life, isn't it? Those words all came to pass. And they can come to pass for you and me. Huh. They can come to pass for America. Presently, in an evil grip. But the Lord has a plan for these evil people. And it's not going to be pretty. All right, let us wrap it all up with Proverbs chapter 17, verse 23. Proverbs 17, 23. Oh, this proverb applies today. Uh, I wish I had 10 billboards across America. We would, we would pay and have this painted up there in huge letters. A wicked man accepts a bribe behind the back to pervert the ways of justice. Justice. That's what God wants to see. He wants to see us living lives patterned after his precious only begotten son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus, the Messiah. 
not any Jesus, but Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one born there. Let's hear this one again. And we ask, Lord, that these words, these live words of your proverb, Lord, let these words cut through and pull down. And in our prayers, pull down the evil plots and plans and the evil people. A wicked man accepts a bribe behind the back. Hmm. Has anyone done that lately? Hmm. To pervert the ways of justice. Justice. Let's wrap it up in prayer. Precious Father God, we are so grateful for your word. Mm. Wow. What a wonderful, wonderful word. Thank you for it, Lord. Let it sink down deep as the psalmist David said. Let it sink down deep into our souls and our spirits. Let it be on our minds. Let it be on our lips. Let us share it. Let us speak out words of justice, words of truth. We bless you for that, Lord. We know that's what you want your children in the church, your body of Christ to do. Not to just go along with the whatever is happening out there, but to take a stand, to stand up for truth, to stand up for you, stand up for your word, to share Jesus with everyone we can and lead as many to you, to be saved, to be repentive and washed clean of their sin, to come into the body of Christ and enjoy a brand new life, with all the heavy burdens removed, just joy abundant. Please, Lord, give us joy, each one of us, wherever we are at the moment. Give us the joy, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And it's strength we want today, Lord. And it's in the joy of you. Thank you, Lord. You could have made it a, a real hard a, a thing but that we had to work hard to attain. But it's just breaking out into joy is our strength. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we hold up Israel. We hold up Jerusalem right off the top. And Lord, we will continue to pray that your mighty right hand Continue to be all over your army, your IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, all over the leaders of these forces, giving them wisdom where they should go and what they should do. The time has come to clean up on the enemy. And Lord, don't let any of them listen to the other voices that say, oh, you got to quit this. Oh, no. Not this time. Lord, let's strengthen each and every one of them. Give them comfort for the ones who have been killed in this struggle. War always has its casualties. Lord, please touch the families whose hearts are grieving. Grieving, missing, missing them, particularly, Lord, the ones who were tortured and harmed and abused, even little children. And Lord, if there are any captives yet, we are asking that you make a way of escape for them. We ask, Lord, that evil hands cannot torment them anymore. Please, Lord Jesus, please, we come to you with bowed heads and spirits asking for your people to be blessed. Father God, I hold up America to you. And please, there are others from other countries. Maria, I know you're holding up Peru. 
Let's hold up any country the Lord puts upon your heart or your mind, people, group, situation, whatever. Don't don't let it just run on by your your thought process, but pray. Pray for the things that the Lord brings to our minds. And Lord, I, ha I have a very dear friend, and we prayed a lot yesterday. And Lord, she had three requests. She would love to meet just the right mate for her and have a marriage. So Lord, I'm asking, will you bring her the mate that you have chosen. Lord, she would like to be married and not be lonely anymore. Lord, I'm asking that you be with her as she does this schooling, this schooling to enter uh, investigative work, uh, police work that kind of runs in her family. And Lord, it's her heart's desire. I'm asking, Lord, you help her with all the studying of all the books, everything that she needs to learn, that you'll help her with good grades. And then, Lord, she has some areas of her little house that really need some renovation. And she's asking, precious God, that you, you help her to bring in more money that she could do that. I'd ask that you bless her today with peace with encouragement. We give you all the glory for that, Lord. Father, I'd, I ask that you hear all the prayers of all the people here and that you bring answers, that you bring encouragement and assurance to them that you have heard and that you have love for each person, each situation. Lord, let bondages be broken. Let old, old, spirits even that have traveled through families we break your hold in the name of jesus christ we break your hold we say let the people loose in the name of jesus christ of nazareth that they might walk in the freedom that you have given them when you suffered on the cross and paid the price of our sins oh jesus we are so grateful to you and now, Lord Jesus, you are enjoying, you are enjoying being at the right-hand side of your Father today and every day. And you are interceding for us. Oh, how exciting. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for praying for us. You know everything. And all of God's people went ahead with your own prayers, your own readings. Please read all the word of God again today. He, he has it for you, for you personally for you. Please know that I love you also. Have a great day in the Lord. Bye-bye.